Well, Eric, we are back in the studio. I love it. Which is always fun. It is. Uh, Last week, we mentioned the fact that we are in a scattered thunderstorm season. So if people don't know what that is, basically, we're not releasing one episode every single week to give people time caught up. Every single day. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I've probably We are releasing one every single week. (laughs) It's it's so scattered, obviously. (laughs) That's what we mean by scattered. (laughs) It's a whole new meaning. So we're not releasing an episode every single day. We are releasing at least this week and last week, one a week. Yes. Next week, we're actually going to be starting a scattered thunderstorm series mm. where you have a series, I have a series. So we'll be releasing one episode on a Tuesday and one on a Thursday. You want to quickly talk about what your series is about for the next 10 weeks? Yeah, it's uh, it's called Becoming Brave. At least uh, that's its placeholder title. And of course, I take my titles very seriously. So I want to make sure it's just right. But that's what it's about. It's basically about having stunning composure while staring at a world that has fallen to pieces. And I think this is one of the most felt needs that we have as the church today is to have that inner fortitude, that perspective that is heavenly, no matter what is taking place. So we are truly doom proofed in our inner man so that the doom and gloom of the world has no reach into our soul. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit to us to actually have that fortress about our soul and to have an attitude of joy and triumph no matter the circumstances, whether we're being led to torture and be uh, thrown into prison, you know, whether whatever it is, we have something as believers that is triumphant in the hour of trial. That's so good. Uh, I'm going to be covering the first part of Ephesians chapter four, looking at our calling and what does it mean to actually live worthy of that reality? In other words, not just esteem the Christian life, not just go, okay, yes, I, I know God has a purpose and a plan for my life, whatever that may be, <clears throat> but actually to embrace the reality that we are called by God for this generation. What does it mean to walk in that reality and take the reality of the Christian life and actually bring it to the streets of our everyday living? So I'm really excited over these next 10 weeks, walking through these two series. And again, it's going to be not as intense in the sense of release schedule, the truth's not going to change. So it'll That's still right. be intense truth. That's right. Uh, a brave hearted boom. <laughs> but in terms of the release schedule, just to give people some time to get caught up and give us some time to be prepping yeah. for our summer. We always want to put it on our audience. We're trying yeah. <laughs> to let you get caught up. Meanwhile, we're like, how in the world are we supposed to get this uh, summer series done? That's right. But we do. It, you know, It's called Daily Thunder. So it's a reasonable appeal back to say, uh, what is this? Why are you only doing one a week this week? Why are you only doing two for this whole series? That's why we call it scattered thunderstorms. I mean, we, <laughs> once we came up with that name, and that was like the ideal thing for us. We're like, that is the perfect name. That's what we're doing. We're scattered thunderstorms right now. And now that has a whole other meaning too. Uh, yeah, with, with being some of scattered. Our, some uh, of our we thinking. truly are scattered. <laughs> but and so we're anticipating a big series this summer, which will be a daily uh, setup yep. where I'll be doing three times a week, God willing. You'll be doing twice a week, and so we'll be filling. We'll, we'll be getting people behind again where, where we're just going to be, uh, but it, it's going to be some big series. And I think it's going to be really fun for us to go through that. So, Amen. Well, coming up really soon, we have the Arise Collective Theater coming back to our campus and are going to be hosting and putting on the Pilgrim's Progress musical. Uh, they were here this last year. And mm-hmm. I don't know about you. I remember us talking about, even before they got here, before we had yeah. seen it, uh, all we really knew is that there's this group that really loved theater and we're gonna come in and do a show called Pilgrim. And we were excited, but we had no idea what to expect. Yeah. And I remember right after that first night, looking and having this conversation going, that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> it was so much more grand and just amazing. Yeah. You wanna talk about just how theater has affected you and your family. Yeah. I know that I'm kind of a theater geek, is yeah. probably the best term to use. I love good theater. You were a theater geek long before Pilgrim. Okay. Yes. And I don't know that I was. It's, it's, not that I, it's not that I was against it at all. Like, uh, we've enjoyed some different theater experiences together, and I enjoy it. But, like, your fascination with it, I remember, you know, you were just trying to get me into different things. It's like, oh, you should listen to this song out of this musical. It's like, really? Uh, okay. And then I do. It's like, oh, that is good. I, I want to know more about that. So, That's true. One of my normal playlists that I are con- is constantly playing on my... Uh, Spotify is is my musical playlist. Yeah. Uh, so it is it is a love. And so you do have an ad, you know a little advance uh, on this from me, uh, and but you know so I read I met Rich Garnot who who is the the head of this of the Arise Collective Theater out in New York at Lamplighter when I was out there speaking was that a couple years ago, 
And we just hit it off. And he, my, I have two kids that are interested in musical theater. Well, I don't know much about musical theater, right? And it was right during the COVID lockdowns. And, and he, he said something like he runs a uh, Christian musical theater uh, company. I'm like, really? Oh, isn't that interesting? I probably even made some statement like, you should come out to Ellerslie and perform. Well, he took me seriously. <laughs> and, and I'm uh, glad he did. Oh, so am I. Yeah. And, but like you said, neither of us had a chance to see this before it came here, which is not normal Ellerslie protocol, right? I mean, we want to know what we are uh, representing, but I knew Rich. And then I had met his wife, Mindy, and met his family and really liked them. I mean, they're some of the most delightful people. And but when they came out, I think, you know, because I have multiple children that have been involved in this now over the past however long this has been, if it's just it's been, been a year, year, is that all? <laughs> uh, but they've actually traveled the country with them. And, you know, it was Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York. And it has been such a transformative process, even for my kids to be around this group and to witness the power of the arts used solely for Jesus. That's what's interesting is I think a lot of us struggle with the use of art. It's like, can art be redeemed? And yet when you see a group like this, use it for Jesus, to communicate Jesus in everything they do. I mean, the prayers beforehand, they, they have, you know, when they arrived last year, it's like, let's, okay, guys, we're about to go into ministry mode here. Let's make sure we're just drenching this in prayer. I mean, it's something that you and I are like, ah, oh, we like that. This is good. And they want us coming in and speaking devotionals. They want truth spoken. They want their students meditating upon, or their, their, their actors meditating upon truth. And then, get this, they were so impacted by their time here that they had, I want to say, 35 to 40 of their crew that actually went through Ellerslie last summer. Was that a semester or what? <laughs> it was probably, not, not to downplay any other semester, it was one of the most fun semesters, probably because... It was the biggest semester we've ever had, probably yeah. will ever have. Yeah. Uh, because of that group, because yeah, we didn't have room for him, but his little feet didn't have their their, uh, their people, into, their kids in town. So we had their dorm, so we had bonus space. And it was, it was so amazing just having just that love for Jesus yeah. and just a willingness to pursue Christ, which has been a great blessing for me is to watch. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of theater people, and usually their lives are unhealthy, you yeah. know, uh, especially if you're in the secular world. I mean, it is yeah. it is so dark, yeah. and yet I love their passion, and everyone, a part of it is just their desire is not just to bring Jesus through this particular yeah. project, but it's actually to bring Christ into the arts, yeah. and I love their, their excellence, I love their fervor, and I love the fact that, like, as you already mentioned, it's not just a performance for them, yeah. where it's just like, all right, let's do the performance, let's, you know, go and have our life. They labor uh, for the glory of Jesus Christ. They're constantly praying, constantly being in the Word. Uh, they, they spend a lot of time in ministry afterwards. It's been actually a really yeah. rich blessing, not just to see the show, which is phenomenal, yeah. but to see how they're living behind the scenes. Yeah. It's actually been really encouraging. I agree. And I, I've been tremendously blessed by this. And I think it, it, the, the hard thing for it, it's not like a podcast where you can just sort of show the musical through, you know, audio or through a video. And it, it they do have a video of it. I don't know if they've ever released it. I know that they captured it, but there's licensing issues and things like that. But it's so it's it's one of those things that you sort of have to be here. <laughs> and I wish it wasn't that way, but at the same time, if you are here, the intimacy of the chapel. First of all, I remember thinking, how in the world are they going to do this here? They brought in so much equipment. They spend about a week or two, I don't know how long it is, retrofitting the chapel. So if you know the Ellerslie Chapel, you just sort of smile. They bring the stage out, would eight, you say eight feet or eight so? Eight feet. And it is like... With, a, with, a, with an orchestra pit. They have an orchestra the pit. <laughs> and so they can, you, can, you can't fit that many people in Ellerslie. It's like 150 or so people as a result because so much space is being used up for the production. But if you're one of those 150 people, it's gold. It is so precious because the intimacy of the environment, you feel close to the actors, you feel close to the event, and it is moving. It is like Pogo's Progress, is a very good story to start with, right? It's a very powerful story. And if you are a certain ilk, you really like the allegory and you think it through and you chew on it. But it's not for everyone, I would say. But this this play or this theater production is for everyone to the point where the way, some of the things they've done with it bring it to life in such a way where it just shines in your soul. And I think their additive of 
the father is it, is it the king it's the king character i haven't seen it for a few months now right the king character which is rich garnot uh, that the one i was mentioning earlier would you say that was probably the most powerful thing for you because i i think for me the most powerful thing was the king character in the story yeah i've i've read pilgrim's progress i don't know how many times multiple times <clears throat> and i love what john bunyan just the the allegory of the christian life it's so profound but I remember the first time I watched it, I, I left. I was so deeply stirred because of the King character. Yeah. Something the one the one issue I've always had with Pilgrim's Progress, and it's issue is probably too strong of a term. <laughs> but the one thing he alludes to, but he doesn't yeah. show in the story, is the fact that when we're on the journey of the Christian yeah. life, Christ lives inside of us. He's yeah. going along with us. Yeah. So it's not just me encountering these trials and difficulties. He's with me. Yeah. And so what they've done with the musical. And it is, it's one of the most impactful thing is to actually realize that wherever Christian goes, yeah. the king is always with him. He yeah. never leaves the side of Christian. So regardless of the, the difficulties facing, yeah. regardless of the problems, he's always there. And it is so impactful. It is, it is so stirring. It, I mean, is. It, it, it is such a grand musical in the sense of great music. Yeah. There's a lot of funny moments, but it is, it is spiritually impacting. Yeah. And you leave wanting to know Jesus yeah. more. Which I think is actually a great sign of oh yeah, uh, great art is it's, not it's that you're well being used the art. art, well used yes. art. I the they don't take a bow in the end; they come out worshiping. Yes, in the conclusion, and then they're just there. And if people want to come up and just be prayed for or talk, it's the whole thing is outward focused to bless and to not look like there's something special. It is it is a it is a beautiful thing. That I know, I don't know if this is a helpful podcast for anyone because they're like, you know, I live in the Philippines. I can't even be there. Why are you telling me this? At the same time, I guess if we could take a nutshell out of it that could be encouraging, it's that when you do what you do, doesn't matter what it is, for the glory of God, the same thing that we are witnessing in and through this musical theater is what happens. And, it, you know, because most of us don't think of musical theater as being a experience of knowing God. It's an entertaining experience. It's fascinating. It's intriguing. Look at how humans can be trained to do things with such excellence. But when someone truly dedicates, whatever it is, if it's uh, even if it's not an art form and it's what they do in business, but they do it truly for the glory of God, it impacts the world around because that's what God designed us to do with our life and our skills and our talents. And that's what I see in this. And it's it's been deeply moving to me. And I think we're both sort of anticipating their arrival because they're arriving, I think I want to say Sunday of this, uh, maybe it's, wait, wait a minute. It's right around uh, right right soon. now. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say it should be any day <laughs> theoretically. Uh, I haven't heard the official date of when they're yeah, coming, I don't but I know, I know it's it it's soon. Yeah, uh, and I'm so excited because some of them are have become such dear friends. Uh, I just I'm just I'm excited to see them. But all that being said, outside of that thought, I think there's two ways people. I think two reasons we're probably even bringing this up. One, if you're able to come we would highly encourage you to come. Now, a lot of the tickets are already reserved. It's free to come. You just got to make sure you reserve a ticket. But if you're anywhere near Colorado, we would love to have you come. It's worth the drive. It is. Or it, the flight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We have a bunch <laughs> of people coming in that way. Yeah. Uh, but it starts March 24th. That's opening night. It'll go through April 9th. And we'll put a link in the video description, in the, in the podcast description for those who actually want to reserve a ticket. We'd love for you to come. Again, space is really limited, uh, but it'd be fun, one, to, to see you with us here, uh, but one, just for you to experience it. Uh, they're also going to be in Branson, Missouri in May. So if you can't come to Colorado, mm. that might be another option That's for you. That's a fun place to go to. Okay. Not as fun as you know coming to Windsor and visiting Allersley, but it is a fun place. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're unable to come, I know it's like we're teasing this out, and yeah. we've had some people in our past who are just like rather frustrated with us <laughs> that we keep teasing the fact that they can't come. But what I would, what I would for those people, I would actually encourage you to be praying yeah. for the people who will be coming. Uh, we've had hundreds of people, uh, and of course, over the last year, there's there's been thousands of people who have seen this production yeah. across the nation, and there's been some incredible stories of transformation and just impact yeah. for the gospel. And so, I would just encourage you if you can come, you know, click the link, see if you can make it happen. But if you can't come, be praying for this for this whole group. Uh, your kids are going to be back in it, which is yeah. going to be really fun to 
to see them in the production. Yeah, it's sort of sad to think that Hudson is hypocrisy and judge hate good. <laughs> it's like, what am I raising my son to do here? Yeah, but well, it is really fun. Uh, and he's really good at those parts, yeah. which is probably concerning, uh, <laughs> should be told. <laughs> but I love, I love him in those roles. Uh, but it is, if you can come, I would love for you to come. If you can't come, be, please be praying just for the cast, for those who will be attending. I think it's going to be really a powerful season. Yeah. And we decided that as a fun, almost bonus, if you're watching the video version of this, yeah. we're actually going to put the trailer that they made, uh, which they actually filmed here uh, at the Ellerslie Chapel, um, as an extension to this uh, to this episode. If you're listening on the podcast you're going to have to go watch it. There's there's something about the visual. You just can't listen to it. Yeah. So we'll put a link where you can watch uh, the promotional video, but we'd love for you to watch this. So if you're watching the video, uh, we're about to start that. If you're listening, well, click. <laughs> <laughs> but we hope we can come. God's blessings, everyone. Christian, you have no idea how much danger you were in. You have to leave this city forever. Somehow the stuff in this book is real. You're settling for a wasted life. I hope you choose to walk the road with the king, Christian. We're going to the celestial city. You should come with us. The celestial city is a real place. Truth is relative. Don't trust anyone but yourself. The king is the only one who can make you clean. And he loves you despite your dirt. Are you telling me what to do? We're going off the path. Want to go to the celestial city. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. <laughs>